Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in and coming back and watching. Really appreciate it. Hope you have an awesome day. Uh, and in this video, I'm going to talk about what I consider the five best filters for edits uh, in color in your photo. So in other words, the five best color filters in Luminar. So I'm currently in Luminar Flex. I've got five different photos and in instead of walking through one filter on each photo, I'm actually going to use multiple filters and show you different examples of how they can work on different kinds of photos. I think it'll give you a better idea of how you can use these filters. And so let me jump into it because we've got a lot to cover. Let's go. Okay, so here we are. I've got a sunset. Now the five filters you can see over here on the right hand side, brilliance and warmth, color balance, cross processing, golden hour and split toning. These are my five. Uh, your opinion, your mileage may vary, you know, whatever. Um, these are the five that I consider the uh, the best for color editing. Now the standard stuff is saturation and vibrance. Um, I do a lot of color temperature kind of work, but these are the five that I find myself when I'm enhancing the colors that I'm using time and time again. So let me show you how they work and um, why I think they're so great. So uh, brilliance and warmth, as the name implies, you can just kind of get more brilliant or vivid. Uh, so in this sunset photo, I can go that way. I could go to the right to increase the warmth or to the left to in uh, increase the uh, the coolness or decrease the warmth, I guess. Uh, but that made a massive difference on the photo. There's the before, there's the after. Um, I'm gonna reset each of these in turn. Color balance, don't have time to go into how it works and all that. Just suffice it to say it works. And I've got several videos here. You can look through my history um, explaining color balance. But as you can see, you can separate shadows, midtones, and highlights and do some color maneuvering in each. So in this case, I might would take the um, shadows, make them a little bluer. I might take the highlights, make them a little warmer. And, you know, next thing you know, I've got a beautiful looking sunset. So here's the before and the after. Now I'm just showing you, except in the case of one of these photos, I'm only showing you the color edit. Um, there were other things that I would do to the photos. I might add, you know, uh, do some denoise or some negative structure to smooth out like the water in the sky here. I might do some something like with a develop filter to control the highlights or add contrast or add clarity. I'm not going into all that in this video. I'm simply showing you the color impact of these filters. So um, cross processing is super awesome. Check this out. I mean, I just love that. That's the Tokyo. You've got a number of different um, options here. Seattle, I use on a lot of sunsets. As you can see, it's very pink. So in this case, I would take it down, but it does a nice job of adding a nice little pink tint to, um, uh, to a photo. And there's some other great ones in here as well. This Miami's pretty cool, and Geneva's pretty cool as well. So that's cross-processing. Golden Hour, um, if you have Luminar, you have surely used Golden Hour. I love it. It's great for sunsets, but it's great for other things too, which I'll show you. But simple, drag the amount, drag the saturation slider, and you get a more golden look to your photo. And then last, but certainly not least, is split toning. And by the way, I just put these in alphabetical order to make it easy. <clears throat> split toning, what do you do? You separate the highlights from the shadows and you add uh, or you specify a color or a color range effectively, you know, like a, uh, well, it's a color, I guess, basically. A hue is what they call it. You pick the hue for the highlights separately from the hue for the shadows and then you drag the saturation slider to increase the amount of that. So. In this case, uh, let's say I want to go a little bit red in the highlights, I can create a redder looking uh, sunset. Maybe I want to go a deeper blue in the shadows and I can drag that and you can see that the uh, photo is taking on the look of um, warmer in the highlights, cooler in the shadows. So there's the before and the after and that's how it works. I'm going to hop into the next photo. I'm not going to go into explanations about any of these, um, but I'm just going to show you kind of how they work. Uh, vividness, actually I would go to uh, negative on this. Um, instead of warmth, I would go with coolness. I think that looks really cool. Uh, nice and, uh, nice and uh, you know, a cooler kind of look. Uh, in the shadows for color balance, I think I would take this down like that. Um, I think highlights and midtones, I might do some, a little bit of adjustment as well. And you can see that I'm able to make an impact. There's the before, there's the after. I love color balance. It's one of my favorites. I don't recommend rushing like I am though, because um, it's easy to just uh, get frustrated and decide that the filter is not any good if you're in a hurry. So I don't recommend that. I'm just kind of going fast here. Uh, this Tokyo looks good. I think um, Chicago, nope, that's the green one. I gotta remember that. I like this, um, this Miami. I think that looks cool. Just take that down a little bit. 
kind of a little futuristic, a little bit faded. Geneva looks pretty good, and I think, uh, you know, oddly, London doesn't look that good on this one, even though it's a London photo. I think the Dallas looks not bad as well. Um, anyway, cross-processing is pretty cool. Golden Hour, I would not use in this photo because it's already plenty gold, and all that's going to do is make it a really barfy yellow. But I just wanted to show you some of these color filters on different kinds of shots. A sunset shot, here's a night shot. Um, in this case, I think for split toning, I would go into the blue realm, and I think I would do that for the shadows as well. I'm kind of winging it here. Um, let's see. I think something like that. Again, keep in mind, um, I would use other filters. I think I would probably want to do maybe a vignette here. I'd like to bring up some detail in the street, things like that. Again, just kind of running through these quickly to show you that they can work well on lots of different photos. Speaking of which, here's another one. So brilliance and warmth, I think you can pop that. If you go warm, that um, those yellow colors in the buildings are going to get really crazy. If you go left, you're going to get a lot more of a blue uh, because it's you know you're you're cooling it off. But I think that looks really cool. Um, color balance can work here, similar kind of thing. I think whoa, that's probably a little too much. Um, I think the highlights I might would make a little cooler as well. And you know, as I said, I don't recommend rushing it, but you can do some cool stuff with color balance. Um, there's the before, there's the after. Just made a little bit bluer. And it's also got a little bit of a vintage kind of faded look to me now, but I'm gonna reset that. Um, here goes Tokyo again. I'm digging this Tokyo thing. I've been using it in a number of photos, really liking it. I've always used Seattle for uh, like sunsets, uh, golden hour, because it's got a nice, there's a bug, um, nice little bit of pink in it. But uh, this Tokyo, I think it looks pretty sweet. Monterey, that's kind of faded. Not really my look, but it might be yours. Chicago is too green, in my opinion. Um, Seattle's kind of pink. I think it would work well in this photo. I would just take it down a little bit, something like that. Um, I'm gonna try the Miami. Yeah, I'm really liking Miami too. I think that's pretty cool. It's almost kind of faded vintage. Anyway, I don't wanna go through every one of these. Uh, golden hour, again, you gotta be careful when you have the warmer tones and you add golden hour. If it's not a sunset, things like this, the yellows and oranges really start to come to life. And I think you just wanna be careful with that. Um, you know, you can get kind of crazy quickly, but uh, you know, even, um, you know, there's a mild implementation of golden hour. There's the before, there's the after. It gave it a little pop. It, it, it kind of works for me there. Uh, and then split toning. I'm, I'm really into the blues, if you can't tell. Uh, so let me get over here kind of in the blue range. And, uh, you know, here's, here's a cool thing. So I just made the highlights really blue. You could then go get another filter like um, highlights and shadows and then come over here and take the highlights down. And all I'm doing is darkening uh, that blue, right? You could also do that with HSL and take the luminance of the blue down. But I basically went from uh, kind of a gray overcast day to kind of a blue hour, almost evening looking kind of shot. So, um, you know, you can stack multiple things, of course, to get the look that you want. Okay, let's keep going. Um, a landscape, so here I am, uh, like a wooded landscape, um, but I'm talking about color filters, which may not be the first thing that you think about, but you know, you can bump up the vibrance. That's probably a little much, but uh, you know, you can cool it off or warm, warm it up. I actually think with that vibrance up um, and the warmth increased, it looks pretty good. The rocks that have some yellow in them is uh, starting, that's really starting to pop, I think. Uh, color balance, same kind of thing, right? I do a lot of the, the blues into the shadows, um, that's probably a little moody, but even just that went from there to there, kind of a faded, it's kind of got that, um, um, I don't know if you've seen, there's photographers out of the Northwest that do a lot of these wooded glade kind of shots, and a lot of them have this kind of, um, this kind of look to it. Anyway, you can do that pretty well in color balance. Uh, Cross-processing, here we go with Tokyo again. I'm digging it, let's try Miami. Yeah, a little too blue, but I've got it kind of high, so I could take that down. And that's kind of got like a steel gray kind of look almost in that uh, in the in the stream. There you go. There's the original, and there it is with that kind of a little bit of blue to it. I kind of like it personally. Let's try Geneva. Yeah, that's a little bit more on the uh, less blue and a little bit more kind of darker. Uh, almost kind of wanting to get into like the lavenders or something. But anyway, cool options there. Uh, golden hour. You might not think of doing that in a, a shot like this, but as you can see. As I increase the uh, the amount and the saturation, it doesn't look bad. And in fact, it looks pretty nice. I think it makes the water pop. Uh, let me show you those greens. Notice how the greens have changed. Um, 
the golden hours affect yellows and yellow is a component of green. So I've talked about this in videos, but it's been a long time. And that is um, if you're increasing your yellow saturation, your greens start to pop as well. And that's kind of what golden hour is doing. So you might want to be careful there. You could go with the HSL filter, stick it on, take down the saturation and the luminance of the green. And in fact, let me, let me just see if that works since I'm telling you about it. Um, here's HSL. So I would go to luminance of green and just take that down. Yeah, see, I think that made all the difference in the world. Um, I didn't even touch the saturation. I just took down the luminance and I think it looks better. So I've got golden hour. I could even increase that a little bit. Those yellows are kind of popping. But um, if I turn this off, let me turn that off. You can see the greens really coming to life. But adjusting the luminance there is uh, in the HSL filters is sort of taming that for me. So remove that filter, reset that. Uh, split toning. I don't know if I'd use split toning here. Um, I tend to use split toning for like cityscapes and things like that where I'm trying to, um, it's kind of a vintage, like a colorized, faded, like a 1970s uh, snapshot that got redone. Anyway, I don't know if I'd use it here. I use it a lot on sunsets uh, and night shots and cityscape shots where I'm trying to get some better uh, color um, stuff. Last photo up. Now, in this one, I added the Accent AI filter, and that's simply because the photo's too dark, um, and you wouldn't be able to see the color edits. So, um, and as I said at the beginning of the video, this video is not about, hey, use this one color filter and don't use anything else. It's really a just showing the power of all these different color filters and why I consider them my favorites. But again, I wouldn't use them alone. I would absolutely use them in combination with other things, whether it's Raw Develop, Accent AI. Now, I'm in Luminar Flex, so it's Accent AI. It's not AI 2.0. Anyway, um, uh, let's see. Okay, so uh, Accent AI is on, so you can see the photo better because it was so dark. So brilliance and warmth, I could bump up the brilliance. A little crazy there. I might would take it down, and I might would cool it here. Um, and you know what? I mean, it's a much better looking photo, I think. So let me show you the before and the after. It sort of tamed some of those bright uh, yellows, which means that golden hour is not going to work here. Um, color balance, I think, could work well because you can really get some good blues. Let me see here. Actually, it's I think it's going to be more mid-tones here, it looks like. Yeah, so, um, you know, just trying to get some of these color. Look at that. I mean, that's looking pretty cool. In fact, I think that looks really cool. I think for the highlights, um, let me try this. Try a little bit to the, the purple and or the magenta, a little bit to the blue. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's probably not the exact look I would do, but I'm, I'm getting closer. It would take experimentation, which you know we don't have time for since I'm sh showing five filters on five photos. So, But if you look at the before, this filter, totally golden, way too like yellow and gold for me. Color balance has given me a lot more control over the photo. I think that's looking a lot better. That's not the exact answer, but with some time, I could get there. Uh, Cross-processing. Right, so Tokyo, let's try this like um, Miami. Yeah, that's kind of cool. It's um, kind of vintage-y looking, kind of faded. I, I like it. Uh, let's try Geneva. Ooh, no thanks. Uh, let's not do that. Let's see if any of these other ones look good. I think London's gonna look terrible. Yeah, Dallas. Dallas isn't bad. It's kind of faded. Um, I think I would stick with like Tokyo or um, what was the other one? Was it Miami? Yeah, Miami. I really like Miami the best for this one. Uh, but again, you know, you're not obviously not required to use cross-processing. I think it's a really cool filter. It gives you a lot of flexibility, and each city name is a different sort of color look. And you, I just ex recommend experimenting with them, and you'll find over time the ones that you like for certain things. But I think that Miami doesn't look so bad here. So let me hit reset. Golden hour, as I said, this is a disaster. So I would not use it on this photo. Split toning, I probably would. Let me get over here, and I want to get into the blues because for me, this photo is just way too warm and too yellow and gold and orange and all that, and I want to get better control, and look what I just did. I mean, I'm digging that. Okay, probably not that far. Probably something like that, and I might give it a little more Accent AI just to brighten it. Let me turn off split toning so you can see what that did to the photo. There it is. Bright gold, yellow, orange, whatever it is, super warm. Too much for me. Um, it didn't look like that. It actually looked a lot more like that. And that was Accent AI and Split Toning. And in that case, I might just use those two filters and be done with the photo. So um, that's how it works, my friends. Those are the five different filters that I consider the best ones in Luminar. 
for doing color edits. There's plenty of others. Like I said, I do a lot of temperature and tint work, which is in raw develop. You can use saturation and vibrance. You know, there's other things you can use as well, color contrast, etc. Um, but these are the ones that I, I use most frequently and therefore I consider them the best. They're also, I think, incredibly versatile. And so um, that's what I wanted to walk through. I hope you found it helpful and I hope it gives you some ideas on things you can do with your own photos. And thanks for watching, my friends. By all means, please leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. If you haven't yet, hit subscribe, hit that bell so you get notifications when I post a new video, which is basically twice a week. Um, and you know, like the video, let YouTube know, hey, I like what Jim's doing. Let him know. Um, that helps me a lot and I appreciate it. Other than that, have a great day. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon, my friends. Take care. Adios.